Hey everybody, welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. If you are new here, my name is Kristana and I am a furniture artist, so welcome. Every Tuesday we go over different stuff, so if you are not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. So I wanted to go over something that I have gotten a lot of questions about. I am going to show you guys the top four types of paint that I personally have used on furniture throughout my furniture painting, furniture artistry journey, okay? So there are lots of different paints out there. There's enamels, there's ceramic paints, there's latex paints, all the things. But these are the top four paints that I have used, type of paints. So I am not going to talk about brands today. Let's get a bit, little bit closer, okay. I'm not gonna talk about brands today because I do have a few contracts with different companies, but I am going to show you how the different paints are used and you won't see a few of the brands. Now, we're gonna talk about a chalk-like paint. So I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Belle Paint Company, you guys all know that. So I will talk about their chalk-like, chalk mineral paint. But for the most part, most chalk style paints are the same, okay? And if you're ever wondering why do these names have chalk-like, chalk mineral, chalk style, chalk infused, all that stuff is because Annie Sloan is the creator or the first originator of a chalk-like paint and she has trademarked the word chalk paint. So if you ever see companies that have like chalk mineral paint, chalk synthesis paint, it's because they can't use the word chalk paint. But generally most of these paints are very, very similar. They're not exactly the same because all of them have their proprietary blends and what makes each brand each brand. But for the most part, the properties as far as blending and sealing and things like that are going to be the same across the board, okay? Now, so we will be talking about, I will be showing you the chalk style or the chalk mineral paint. Obviously, like I said, I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Belle, so that is one I'm going to be using. Now, Dixie Belle does not have a clay paint and they do not have a uh, milk paint, a true milk paint. So I will be using different brands, but I will not be telling you the brand that I'm using. Just so you know, that's a disclaimer. Um, but most milk paints that are you're gonna see in the form that I'm gonna show you are all the same, they're used all the same, and then most clay style paints will be used the same exact way, that you can use them the same exact way. So we will be going over a chalk style paint, we will be going over a mineral paint, which I feel like gets really confused. Chalk, chalk mineral paints, chalk paints, and a mineral paint are two different animals, not the same. A, a mineral paint usually has a resin in it, it usually has acrylic binders, things like that, and so they're usually mineral paints are an all-in-one type paint where it does not need a top coat and it usually has a blocking primer built into it, okay? So chalk style paints, I'm sorry if I've lost you so far. So let's talk about chalk paints, okay? We're gonna talk about the different properties of a chalk paint, and I'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna talk about the different properties of a mineral paint, we'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna talk about the different properties of a milk, true milk paint that comes in a powder form, okay? Now there are some companies out there that, there's multiple companies, some of you, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, other things like that, that they have a thing called milk paint, but it's not the same. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about when I say milk paint. It comes in a powder form and you mix it with water. They've got an extra bond. Most companies have an extra bond that you can put into the paint to get a more solid look. Some of the paints, um, so true milk paint, you can get a chippy look with it, but they, companies do have an extra bond that you can put in to make it a more solid look. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to get a chippy look with it. And then there's also a clay-based paint, which is what I, like to use for a more boho blending kind of layering look you'll see a few artists that are out there that use that quite a bit that does require sealing usually people like to seal it with an oil-based wax 
So if I haven't lost you by now, I am going to go in depth with each one. Again, I'm sorry, I cannot answer questions about different brands unless it is the brands that I work with. I hope you understand but I have been allowed to show you the different kinds of paints because there is a confusion. What is milk paint? What is clay-based paint? What is chalk paint? What is mineral paint? So I wanna to try to help you guys a little bit. We're gonna be focusing on the types of paints. We're not gonna be focusing on the brands of paints, okay? Hopefully that helps you. We are gonna get started. I am going to start with a chalk mineral paint. Now, everything I tell you in this video is what my personal preference is, so please just remember that. There are different kinds of brushes that you can use. This is a high quality, um, that's a premium chip brush, a regular cheapo chip brush, and then a high quality synthetic brush. My favorite brush to use for a chalk mineral paint is a high quality synthetic brush. Now, with the chalk-like paints, normally the number one thing you always have to do with prep is you have to clean it really well and then if it's shiny i usually if it's wood and it's shiny i usually use a high grit sandpaper to scuff sand it if it is plastic or glass i usually use a gripping primer but i'm going to show you right now i and i start with a damp paintbrush i'm going to show you right here i am just using my damp paintbrush to put this on this cutting board but chalk like paints like water and you can make it go a little bit further so i'm going to spritz a little bit of water while i'm painting with the next color same exact concept but i'm spritzing with water to make it go a little bit further now it is it does thin it out a little bit but it allows it to go a little bit further so you see right here i only dipped my brush i think twice doing this part whereas the other one i had to dip it like three times or something now this paint blends beautifully 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 but this kind of paint what I normally do is I put one coat down let it dry you can see where that line is and then I'll blend it with the second coat the first coat has dried and so I'm gonna go in with the second coat I'm going to mist it and I'm gonna show you how I blend so this particular paint that I use blends beautifully and you can use a little bit of water you can use a little bit of paint and when you use a high high quality synthetic brush it really blends really really nicely it's very seamless one thing I want you to notice about the colors of the paint is that they're not too different from when they're wet to dry it's not a huge huge difference so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're picking colors a lot of times people will look at the jar and depending on the paint you can't do that so with these chalk like paints you can do that because the color is not that much different and you can see that so these blend so nice so beautiful and this is kind of one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite kinds of paints to use because it's so versatile so the main point is that a lot of these chalk based paints blend really nice. They work really well with water and you can get a nice smooth finish. Now, a lot of people do not like the way chalk paint feels at the end, but I'm going to show you, you can smooth it and get a nice finish if you sand it afterwards. And you can also seal it with wax or a top coat. So I'm going to show you that really quick as well. So that way you can see that it doesn't have to have a chalky finish to it. This is dried and you can see how the blend looks really, really seamless. And once it's dry, you can go in with a high grit 220 or above sandpaper and you can smooth out that finish. And so it will have almost a buttery feel to it once you're done. And it kind of knocks down any brush strokes or anything that got in there and it gives it more of a buttery feel. Next, I wanna show you how it distresses. So I'm using the same sandpaper, a fine sandpaper, and I'm going on the corners, and it distresses really, really nice. So you can use sandpaper to distress it. You can also wet distress this kind of paint. So wet distressing is when you take a paper towel or a towel, or you can even spray the paint directly and you rub it with a towel or a paper towel to distress it the same way that you just did with that sandpaper. So it distresses really nice as well. Next, I'm gonna show you, you can seal this with a wax, you can seal it with a polycrylic. I'm going in with a water-based wax and I'm gonna seal one side and then I'll seal the other side with a polycrylic to show you. But this is 
when you seal this, it deepens the color just a little bit, almost gives it more of a rich look. So those are two options for sealing as well when you are using chalk based paints. Before I go over the other side with polycrylic, I just wanted to show you how you can see on the left hand side, it's not sealed, the right hand side is sealed. So it does richen the color. I'm going in with the satin clear coat right now and I'm going to seal the other side. And I'm just gonna show you the difference of what it looks like with a satin clear coat versus a wax. But you're gonna to wanna to seal this paint if you want it to last forever. Okay, so the top is the wax and the bottom is the polycrylic, the satin polycrylic. So you can see the shine on there. You can see the difference now on the camera. But that is what it would look like once you have it sealed. The next paint I'm gonna go over is a mineral paint. You always wanna make sure you clean and scuff sand no matter what the surface is. If it's super shiny and glossy and it's non-wood, then usually I use a bonding primer. You don't wanna use a natural bristle brush because it will mess with the smooth finish. So you wanna start with a high quality dry synthetic brush. Mineral paint does not really like water. Now, if you are in a super dry area, you can put a little bit of water, a mist, but other than that, you wanna just use the paint. When you're applying a mineral paint, you want the brush to be dry, a high synthetic brush, and you don't wanna overwork the paint too much because if you start overworking it, once it starts setting up, you will get brush strokes, but usually mineral paint is really good at self-leveling and it has a beautiful, beautiful finish. So the finish on this is usually about a low reflective eggshell finish and mineral paints are usually an all-in-one. So I didn't need a blocking primer for this and I also don't need to top coat it. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do two different colors side by side and I am gonna show you because people ask me all the time if you can blend this paint. You can, but it's totally different than a chalk style paint. And I prefer using a chalk style paint when I'm blending because it is so much easier. So I'm gonna show you how I blend this. I'm gonna show you with and without water and you can see the difference. Again, it's possible to blend it, but it's not my favorite kind of paint to blend. So right here, this is one coat. I wanna show you something about the colors of a mineral paint. So when this is dry, the paint colors darken. So what's in the jar is gonna be lighter than what is going to be your final product. So please remember that when you are picking out colors that it does darken a little bit once it dries. So don't pick your color from the jar. Try to pick your colors from actual color cards that are painted and dried. This paint is now dry. That is one coat. That is what the sheen looks like, almost a satin eggshell finish. It has minimal brush strokes. You can do a light sanding with a high grit sandpaper as well later on. But what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put a piece of tape in between and I'm gonna show you how to blend these and why I prefer chalk style paint. I will say mineral paints are beautiful for one color finishes, Hampton style finishes. Okay, here we go. So this side, I'm just going to blend with the paint. I'm not gonna add any water. I'm gonna use the moisture of the paint to blend. So I go to where the transition line is and I add the bottom color and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add the top color and these are two separate paint brushes. And then I'm going to take a clean, dry, neutral brush and I'm going to try to blend it. It blends pretty nicely. Actually, I should have went a little bit further up with that lighter color and you'll see why in a second. So because that paint underneath has dried where that line is with the lighter color you're going to see that with the blend so that's another reason it's not as forgiving as the chalk like paints and blend it doesn't blend in quite as much so now i'm going to do the bottom part like i did exactly with the chalk paint i'm going to use water so i did the bottom color i'm going to spritz it i'm going to take the top color i'm going to spritz it now the reason why mineral paint is not a huge fan of water is because it breaks down the acrylic binders in it and it almost thins it out so i'm going to mist it and i'm going to use a clean dry neutral brush and you can start seeing that line from the layer before so mineral paint does not reactivate with water and so it's a lot harder to hide those transition lines that you get when you're blending so as you can see here the blends are not quite as smooth so that's the with the water so you can see that line where it was dry it just doesn't look as nice and then that's where i told you that i should have went down with the lighter so if you are going to try to blend with a mineral paint you do not want to use water but again you can blend it people ask me all the time 
you can, it's not a matter of can you, it's a matter of should you, because there's other paints that are much better and easier to blend with. You can do what I'm doing right now and smooth the finish out if you want with a high quality or high grit sandpaper. You don't have to, you do not need to put a top coat on this kind of paint, but again, you can see where the blends are. It's just not, it doesn't blend quite as nice and it's more of an ombre blend. A lot of times with a chalk-like paint, you can take two completely different colors and blend them into a nice color. You cannot do that with a mineral paint. It'll muddy the colors. If you are going to attempt to do a blend or like a gradient ombre blend with a mineral paint, make sure that the colors are similar and they're not totally different. You can also distress this paint very easily. I do use a little bit lower grit sandpaper. So instead of a 220, I'll use a 120 just because it already has a built-in top coat and so it's tough. And then you can also wet distress it, but you're gonna have to push down just a little bit harder. I find wet distressing is easier if you do it the same day after it dries versus waiting till the next day. The next type of paint I'm gonna go over is a real milk paint. So this comes in a powder form, and when you mix it, you wanna mix equal parts of water and equal parts of the powder. If you want it to be a little bit more thick, you can put a little less water in there, but what's gonna happen is this kind of paint, If you there's a, a product called a bonding, like an extra bond, that you can put in at this point right now when you're mixing, and it will make it so that it doesn't chip. I always use a wire whisk when I mix this, but the thing is with this kind of paint is that if I want a solid look, I'm just gonna use a chalk type paint or a mineral paint. This paint, I always used it to get a chippy look. I never used it to do a solid look. Again, that's my personal preference. That is how I used it. Now, if you have a resist on what you're using, so like a clear coat or a shellac, then you're more likely to get the chippy look. Milk paints are very unpredictable. You don't know what you're gonna get with them. So if you have problems with like, you know, unless you do an extra bond, you don't know what the chipping is gonna look like. You can use any kind of brush. I just use a cheap chip brush here. I'm gonna mix it in even more with the brush and then I'm going to put my milk paint on. Milk paint is not super solid. Sometimes you need a couple layers, but as you can see on the right hand side, I had put a clear, a gloss clear coat over there just to show you what it looks like when you have more resistance with it. And on the left hand side, it is just the cutting board. When milk paint dries, it some areas look lighter, some look darker. On the right, you see where there's more resist. On the left, there's not as much. Now, to get the chips to come out, sometimes it will start just peeling and chipping, which is really cool to see. But I take a 3M scouring pad and I go over it to start pulling that paint off so that the chips start looking, you can start seeing them. And you can see over on the left-hand side, it's a little bit chunky. That's normal. That is the look that I get with milk paint. So again, if you're using it with a more solid look, it's probably not going to look like that, but you do always want to sand your milk paint with a high grit sandpaper to, especially if you're doing a more solid look with the extra bond, so that you can get the, the particles, the kind of milk particles off and smooth that surface. But right now I'm just sanding it and going over it with the scouring pad so that I can start pulling off some of the paint where it resists so that we can get that chippy look. Remember I told you that when I used this paint, it was always for a chippy look. So a lot of times I took a paint scraper and I would scrape the surface after I had sanded it just to get any extra off. It is not uncommon to come back a little bit later and have your paint chip even more. It's just the way milk paint is. Again, it's very unpredictable. I love the look. A lot of people don't like the look. It just depends on what you do. I like old world chippy textured looks, but you can also do that and then scour it and take more off. So I have seen stories where someone has done this and then came back a few hours later and there was still more paint chipping and peeling. And then again, I'm just gonna go over this with a high grit sandpaper. If you don't want the chippy look and you're using extra bond, you do wanna do this spot, the step, just because there it's kind of gran grainy. So the moral of the story is, is to make sure you go over your milk paint with a high grit 
sandpaper to smooth it out. And that's, it's going to give you different colored looks. And I, you can seal it with whatever you want. You could seal it with wax. I'm going to show you how to seal it with a water-based wax. And I'm also going to show you how to seal it with the satin clear coat. It deepens the color a little bit and then it helps so that it protects your piece. The last type of paint I'm going to go over is a clay based paint. You can use any brush you want with this. I prefer to use a natural bristle brush because it's supposed to be an artistic type paint with the texture and the blending. And so I like using a natural bristle brush because it gives you a more artistic textured kind of feel, but you can use it however you want. So I'm going to use two completely different colors here so that you can see that the blend okay so what happens with this is that you can blend these colors again they're not they're some of them are highly pigmented but you can see this paint is not typically meant to do a, an entire piece in like a solid finish it's meant to do some blending and some artistic feels to it so you can see that this is not quite as it doesn't cover quite as much as the other paints and I'm showing you here with a plastic scraper this kind of paint is really awesome to scrape with because it's a clay and it layers and you can layer this over top of the other colors and then you can blend it in so this is a really fun paint to work with when you want to do artistic kind of boho finishes this paint does dry much lighter and it has to have a top coat because it's clay based it will always reactivate with water, even weeks after it has dried. It does not, it, you have to seal it. And it does the best with an oil-based wax. It does really well with water, so I'm, you're just seeing me blend it. But one thing I really wanna tell you is that whoever the manufacturer is of the paint, you're gonna wanna use the wax or the clear coat or whatever they have created for it because they have tested it with that. I have used this paint and I have used different kind of top coats with this different kind of paint, different brands, and you really don't want to mix and match different top coats with a clay based paint because sometimes it gives you a different look. So whatever the clay based paint companies wax or top coat is you really want to stick with that is basically my main point because they have tested it and what works best with their blend of paint and their formula so that you get the best look for the most part clay based paints really, really like oil-based waxes, but you can see right here, once you put your wax on there, it's going to deepen the color. Again, make sure that you're using the wax or the top coat that the paint company has created because if I were to put a different kind of top coat over here, let's just say I used hemp oil on this that wasn't part of the company, it could alter the colors, not the way that the company intended. So normally I mix and match for these kind of paints, I don't. All right, guys, so I hope that video was helpful. I know that some of you guys are gonna ask me about brands. The only two that I can talk about is the chalk mineral paint and the mineral paint, which is the Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint and then the silk mineral paint. But if you go to Google and you type in, let's say you want milk paint, put powdered milk paint or true milk paint. Or if you are wanting to play around with clay paint, go to Google and put in clay paint for furniture or something like that, okay? So hopefully that was helpful and it kind of helped you understand the differences, you know, the uses, the differences, what you seal things with, what doesn't need to be sealed, how things blend, 
all those things. Honestly, I think I have tried everything and one of my favorite kind of paints to use is a chalk-like paint because it is super universal. You can get nice smooth finishes with it. You can also blend really well. So me personally, I like a chalk-based paint, but um, each one of them has their place because I do love a chippy look and that's what milk paint gives you. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll get all the latest videos. I will have a furniture video out this week on Thursday. I'm gonna be doing something special. A few of you guys requested it. It's for a special person to me and it's for a special reason. So make sure you guys tune in on Thursday to see my next video. All right guys, have an awesome week, bye.